And welcome, everybody here in Twitch chat, everybody on YouTube. All right, we're here for the losers now from the patch 1.2. Patch is going live tomorrow around 1 p.m. Eastern, and that's whenever we're going to be starting the stream tomorrow. We'll be playing new decks with the patch. Those of y'all watching on YouTube in the comments, let me know what do you want to see? What do you want me to play on Wednesday and Thursday and everything like that? Um, but we're going to be talking about 10 losers. We just did the video for the 10 winners. And uh, if you watch on YouTube, hope, hope you uh, check that video out also first. But now let's uh, talk about 10 cards that I think are losers. And I think the, ob the most obvious loser is Legion Rearguard. This card being a 3-1 is really going to make it difficult to play, in my opinion. Um, the 3 power is really nice, but 1 toughness just makes it so vulnerable to everything. And you're already... You're already uh, taking a big risk with this card, how it can't block. It makes it such a bad card to draw in the late game if or if you're behind at all. Uh, not being able to block is, is a really big downside. There's a 3-mana 5-4 that can't block, and that card sees hardly any play because it's just kind of too rough to be playing a 3-mana card that can't block. Now we're playing... so. A one mana card that can't block though, you're only spending one mana. And if it if it always like trades with other one or two mana cards, and if it can get some damage in, okay. But now it's just being a three one, it just trades with so little. Like you can't use transfusion on it anymore, you can't use Imperial Demolitionist on it anymore. Make it rain is killing it. It's trading with Omen Hawk. Um, you know, trading with half of hapless aristocrat. Like, that's just so rough and not doing anything besides just trading this this is definitely the biggest uh loser in my opinion um from patch one two and it's not like noxus was that great of a region <laughs> noxus was probably the worst region and now their their uh best one drop just got hit real hard um makes it pretty rough makes it pretty rough uh we'll kind of see what happens with burn I'm not sure, um, you know, like if burn is going to still stay exactly how it is, it may have to kind of morph into uh, a bigger deck. It's probably going to have to like play some champions, maybe rely on like Draven and Jinx again, like the power of those cards. Um, it's not going to be able to be as low to the ground and um, as efficient as before, most likely. But with that being said, uh, once... I think that, that's probably the most likely thing right away. But that being said, once the metagame kind of changes and people get used to a slower metagame and burn not being there nearly as much and everything like that, and people start tuning their decks away from um, having a lot of good cards against burn, maybe then in a few weeks, you know, like a couple of weeks, like whenever that happens, maybe then bringing back burn even with... Uh, you know, a smaller Boom Crew rookie and Legion rear guard could really uh, pick up some wins at that point. Okay, uh, it's kind of speaking of of Legion rear guard, an, so another card that I think really is, and so basically just another burn card that I think is a big loser in this is Decimate. Um, again, just the same kind of thing. I think it's just going to be a lot harder for like how burn is right now like it really needs to get you know get a lot of damage in and then have decimate as a finisher i think you're going to be looking at at other finishers that you need in for burn right now like i was saying like maybe like draven jinx but that could be like augmented experimenter um could be swain could be vladimir yeah it's i think it's going to be looking at things like that that have the potential to do a lot more damage or the potential to turn games around that maybe you're behind in instead of decimate so i, I do think decimate's a, a real big loser Kind of pairing with the Legion rear guard. It was it was harder to, to pick out ten cards as losers than than the ten cards as winners, to be honest. But those are kind of my two for the um, for the burn deck. Um, obviously, uh, um, obviously Boom Crew rookie. But I, I didn't really want to just say Boom, you know, just say the cards that um, got nerfed and just say the cards that got nerfed are losers. But obviously, Boom Crew rookie now not trading with three twos with two mana three twos anymore uh definitely hurts boom crew rookie as well all right so the next card that i was thinking about um as a card that 
has gotten hurt is going to be Elise. So the reason why I think Elise has gotten is going to be hurt by uh, by patch one two is a lot of it is because of Brood Awakening. You know, Brood Awakening uh, cost six originally, then they moved it up to five and. And it saw like hardly any play at six, basically no play at six. They moved up to five. It saw tons and tons of play. Now they're moving it back to six. Now we all know how good Brood Awakening is because of how much we've played it. Are we going to be playing it at six mana still? I'm not sure. Maybe not. Like especially you know making the the three one toughness things. I think it. I think that definitely hurts Elise having that card cost six mana. Um, also, Frenzied Skitter last patch got nerfed to be a 3-2 instead of a 3-3 and i think that has made a big difference in frenzied skitter uh, yeah, like before it was like always like eating eating one drops basically all the time and now a lot of one mana two ones two two stuff like that are trading with frenzied skitter and you know it can't block those things and so now that we had frenzied skitter nerfed and now <clears throat> brood awakening going to six mana i think that's a that's a big blow to um elise also elise with the spiders with brood awakening and then other shadow owl cards like vile feast and withering whale those cards were all really good against uh, burn aggro and just like the, the aggro decks that go wide and uh so therefore i think that's that also hurts elise that you know your other your aggro decks like legion rear guard and boom crew rookie so like if your aggro is worse that also kind of hurts elise as well so i think that's this is a, a loser and <clears throat> kind of similar to this sticking with with shadow isles here for our fourth card is withering whale um so if like one one thing that's really strong about withering whale was this was a way to spend the exact same amount of mana to trade with uh, Brood Awakening. Once Brood Awakening got to five mana, suddenly Withering Whale and started seeing play all the time. Southern Withering Whale was even more important to play to be able to take out all those spiders. Also, of course, it's a very important card against burn. So if we're talking about less spiders, less burn, Withering Whale looking a little less as well. Um, so yeah, I'm... I think that uh, Withering Whale is a, a worse removal spell. And so kind of like the Karina control in general, like we'll talk about like the deck, like all the decks uh, moving on. But I think like these kind of aspects have hurt a uh, deck like Karina. Because especially like if we're going bigger, if we're playing Vladimir, if we're playing, uh, you know, like if we're playing going bigger with our Noxus decks, playing Vladimir, we're playing Swain, we're playing Sejuani, like those are kind of... We're playing those kind of decks instead of burn aggro withering whale isn't really what you want like you don't want a withering whale a crimson disciple um you don't really want a withering whale even against, against vlad in general and the level up vlad so i think this card has gotten a little worse all right so now we with the cards that got better we talked about some demacia cards let's kind of go over those so we talked about how like shen uh getting better actually may may pull it into to seeing play and therefore if shen's going to be seeing more play in the four mana slot of demacia decks then vanguard bannerman is going to be seeing less play and so i do think the bannerman's a loser now it is it's a loser of, of this patch but you know it's still not going to be unplayable and we'll still see a good amount of bannerman but it's it's basically because of the direct competition with shen for at the four mana slot um shen being ionia not demacia so you don't really want to play bannerman and shen together um and you know you still have grizzled ranger which i, th I think grizzled ranger is still going to be just fine as a card um but bannerman i think hurt uh got hurt a little bit and um yeah so yeah it's, it's already been nerfed once with the allegiance only granting the other allies plus one plus one and now if we're going to be going more towards like a shen plus challenger and kind of focusing on that aspect that also hurts bannerman as well but then the other the other um demacia card that i talked about during the winner's video of course is loyal badger bear now i think that grizzled ranger is still going to be just fine 
as a 3-1 that whenever it dies, you get a 3-4 because you can still get a lot of value with that card. So I think that card's still going to be fine. Um, obviously, it's not going to be as good, but I think it will still be um, pretty highly played. But Badger Bear, on the other hand, I, I really don't think that 3-4 Badger Bear is better than 2-4 Protégé, as we've talked about. Also, you have like 3-3 three, three Vanguard Redeemer that draws a card most all the time because you know you get to choose whenever you're playing it. And Van you usually get to set up Vanguard Redeemer drawing a card. And I'd rather have a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three draw card than a 3-mana three 3-4, three, right? Because the card in my deck is going to be better than a 0-mana plus zero plus one permanent buff kind of thing even um uh even oh gosh the even the three mana three three elite that whenever you play it you create a four demacia in hand um that's still drawing a card and i think i'd, I'd rather have four demacia in hand almost all the time instead of zero mana give your your creature plus zero plus one you know with the badger bear being a three four vanguard sergeant i think is that the name i think that's the name um so i think uh, like demacia has good good three mana cards badger bear being a four four really did outclass them and and uh and yeah i, I was kind of skeptical at first but it really did like the, the raw stats did outclass them but now that it has the same power as your three threes and you just all you do is gain one additional toughness instead of a, an additional card. I think you'd rather have an additional card. And so Badger, Loyal Badger Bear was a three drop that was all over the place before. And I'm very skeptical that it will be all over the place now. I think if I'm making Demacia decks, I'm going with Laurent Protégé. I'm going with uh, Vanguard Redeemer and Vanguard Sergeant uh, instead. So I think Badger Bear is a huge loser. Um, let's see. Okay, so last Demacia card. This one's just pretty obvious. Standalone. Hey, Yori Nato. Um, Standalone was a card that, uh, you know, costing three mana, this is a card that, like, with the Standalone deck, you're always high rolling for it. You're, like, you're always trying to draw this card. You're trying to, um, you know, get, get your not do anything turn one or turn two get your three drop like zed um or fiora play you know play that then play standalone and pump it up so immediately you can block with it whenever you're not attacking um and everything like that now now that that it's four mana i really do think that's a huge difference because that deck um basically the standalone deck was really aggressive and didn't you know it didn't play very good defense so it had to be really aggressive and it had to get the job done really fast so every single mana that that you're spending is vital because with with a shorter game it's a it's a less amount of mana that you're going to have access to so now having this card cost four mana instead of three mana means that that you're going to have to wait another turn before you can play it and you won't be able to have, you know, play two of them by turn four. You know, basically how it was, you play, you know, Zed. You, you can go Zed plus standalone on three. Turn four, you can have another standalone. Plus you could have another one mana spell like a Radiant Strike or a Health Potion, anything like that. Now you'd have like Zed on turn three. You have to wait. Turn four, you can play one standalone, and then you'll still have like th three mana in there to do something else. But you wouldn't have like that second standalone or that third spell even. I think that slows the deck down a bunch, and I think that that definitely makes it a loser. Um, yeah, that really makes that deck hard to be played. Now, one caveat there: if the metagame does slow down enough and if there's not really aggressive decks and if people change their decks to be facing like control and bigger mid-range and things like that then maybe you could still you know go underneath them with the power of standalone but i don't really expect that to happen i still think that there will be aggressive strategies and and things like that and and another another thing that hurts standalone decks is the standalone decks can struggle against challengers like if you if you're like always challenging their unit and you know making them use spells to protect on their turn plus use spells to uh, get through like blockers and stuff on 
um, on your turn or you know like on both turns if they're having to use spells for protection they can definitely run out of protection spells so if we're seeing more shen being played more laurent protege with just that has challenger you know they, they can get pumped buffed up and everything like that uh the more the more shen that's like more repose uh yeah they, they could also hurt the standalone decks all right so that's that's uh loser number seven all right so the next part um let's talk about ionia a little bit now of course karma is going to cost one more karma at six or karma at five i think karma is still just amazing and it's obviously worse at six mana than five mana obviously but it's not that much worse i don't think i don't think that karma is going to go anywhere but uh the thing that that is going to be different is we're going to have deep meditation cost five mana now and so that you know whenever you have the two plus spells cost it'll cost to three now the deck that that's going to hurt i think is that's going to be like the the lower to the ground ionia try to cast a whole lot of spells each turn i think that deck really gets hurt by deep meditation costing five because i think that deck really relied on deep meditation getting them more cards so card number eight for me of cards that have gotten worse um is going to be oh nick ah, i can't even type eye of the dragon okay there you go eye of the dragon um Really? What is going on here? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so yeah, Eye of the Dragon, I think this card has gotten a whole lot worse um, with the patch. Uh, I, with Especially with Deep Meditation um, getting uh, getting nerfed. I think that's this is the card that that hurts. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be... Hard. Like, you can still definitely play two spells in a round. It's just going to be hard to be playing two spells in a round all of the time if your card draw costs an additional mana um, to, to refill. Because, you know, you need, you need to keep refilling to keep playing multiple spells every turn. And you need those spells to be cheap. Also, I think Eye of the Dragon is a little less useful if there's less burn. Because I think this card was, you know, definitely good against burn with getting the Dragonlings out there um you know for that life steal and everything but if there's less burn the life steal is a little less relevant you know not you know so not good for eye of the dragon also if we have more challengers with shen laurent protege all that kind of stuff the more challengers the worse for eye of the dragon because it just kind of sits around you don't really want to get into combat with this one three you want to just sit around and make draglings for you so it's it's going to be worse if you have more people challenging or even just more uh, like Crimson units, more Vladimir. Um, if you do block with Eye of the Dragon, it's probably not killing anything. It's just a 1-3 so that their thing's probably staying alive. So that's another Vladimir trigger. So Eye of the Dragon, not really the 2-drop I'm, I'm looking for right now. I want my 2-drops to be like 3-2s. I want them to be able to kill Crimson Disciple. I think that's going to be pretty important is having 2 mana cards kill Crimson Disciple. Um... Yeah, or, or, yeah, yeah, so, uh, similarly to Eye of the Dragon, another card, another Ionia card that I think actually got hurt by this, by this patch, kind of low-key, is Lee Sin. Same kind of thing with the spell of, like, of Deep Meditation getting nerfed, hurting Lee Sin. But the other thing that really hurts Lee Sin, in my opinion is just the changes to the overall metagame of, of less aggro and um, decks that are going bigger being better. Because Lee Sin's a really, really slow win con. Sure, you know, even if you even if you play it, you have to have those multiple spells every turn, or at least like the one spell, give it challenger, you know, get your dragon kick on, all that kind of stuff. It's just a really slow way to kill people. Where if you're trying to do Lee Sin, and um, your opponent is playing Ezreal, as we talked about with the winners, how I think Ezreal is going to be coming back. Ezreal combo is going to be killing you a lot faster than this Lee Sin is. Lee Sin looks pretty embarrassing against Ezreal. Um, same thing with even like the deep decks. Like, sure, it can like challenge the, the big sea monsters 
and everything and kick them and do some damage but even even at that point you know it's only doing like four damage a turn and you're you're looking at like the the sea monsters going deep real fast and obliterating the library i think those kind of decks are just going to be going over the top um so yeah i, I think that lee sin um has definitely gotten hurt because lee sin is slower now with deep net meditation costing more mana lee sin is slower but then also with the metagame being a little slower the uh decks that have those combo finishes i guess you kind of call them like those inevitable finishes like ezreal and maokai those decks are going to be better and those things uh, go over the top of Lee Sin pretty easily. So I think this is this is actually the Ionia champion that got hurt from this patch the most, not Karma. Um, let's see. And then one other. So then one last card that kind of got hurt. You know, I was trying to trying to think of like something else from like the different regions that got hurt. And this is kind of like so similar to that with the with the Lee Sin. War Mother's Call. War Mother's Call could... It could honestly... Like, the War Mother's Call decks could honestly be okay against Burn, because it us usually played a lot of life gain. Um, you know, like Vile Feast, Withering Whale, and then, you, you know, your uh, Ramp card gained life. Um, Catalyst of Aeons, and, you know, you can play uh, the 6-mana 3-7 with Lifesteal and things like that and it was it was honestly like okay against burn but now if if the format's a little bit more mid-rangey like more like demacia or crimson disciple um vladimir like those kind of things that that's a little bit harder for war mother's call to deal with but really the thing that that hurts war mother's call is again the inevitable decks war mother's call decks are not good against ezreal like karma ezreal they just you know, not only have Deny for War Mother's Call, but they also have Will of Ion. Like, you're trying to play a bunch of big things, big clunky cards like Trindamir, like that uh, Soul Gorger, that card that I was talking about, the 3 7, and Trindamir and Anivia, and things like that. And those cards are all very weak to Will of Ionia. Um, and so, yeah, Ezreal, Ezreal combo finish, it's really hard to stop with a War Mother's Call deck. It's really hard to, to beat the, the Deep Sea Monster decks with this. Um, they obliterate your library. War Mother's Call takes the cards from your library if you don't, ha or your your deck if you don't have cards in your deck, and your deck gets obliterated. Well, that's that's a problem. It's not like War Mother's Call decks were were very good to begin with, but I think this change hurts them a lot. I think what War Mother's Call could do is it could beat the the smaller aggro decks because it had like good anti aggro cards like that, and it could go over the top of those those kind of decks. Um, one thing the War Mother's Call maybe may look a little bit better against like your Shen Barrier decks, maybe, but I don't know, maybe may even be a little slow there. Like it's hard, it's hard to kill Protege, it's hard to kill Shen, you know, four toughness, five toughness, it's hard to kill those those kind of things. And then if they just go Shen Barrier on their Challenger and they just challenge your your big thing, even if they're not killing it, it's not like you're killing their thing because of the barrier and they're getting damage across, so. War Mother's Call, unfortunately, in a pretty rough spot. They need to make this card burst speed, and it still wouldn't be that good, but I would I would be happier <laughs> if we just make War Mother's Call burst speed. All right, so that's our that's the uh, ten losers that I have from patch 1.2. You know, trying to think of some different things there. All right, so now we're gonna go through a metagame breakdown, and we're gonna go. We're gonna go talk about. We're gonna use Mobile Addicts uh, meta tier list, and we'll talk about each individual deck, and if it's better or worse, and why. Um, coming up with the next video. Those y'all watching on YouTube, let me know if, if there's anything I missed, anything you disagreed with. Um, you know, if you if you're seeing things differently, um, let me know in those comment section. Also, if I uh, if they're like whatever you want me to play Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, what decks you want me to, to to see? Like what do you want to see on YouTube? Let me know, and I'll I'll work towards building those. All right, so I'm gonna upload these two videos tonight, and then the other uh, the metagame breakdown I'll, I'll upload first thing in the morning. I'll have it scheduled for first thing in the morning, 
and then we'll have our early stream tomorrow at 1 p.m eastern right after the patch is live and we'll go play a bunch of decks there all right but that's it here for the losers discussion thanks so much for watching and i'll see you for the next video